song that the angels sing, Jesus, dearer to my heart than anything, sweeter than springtime, purer than sunshine, ever my soul. Today my sermon will be focusing about true and false worship. Dear young people, the message we are going to present addresses the very heart of the book of Revelation according to scholars. Chapter 13 is the centre of the entire book. Now, what do we find in this chapter? Why is it so important? What teachings does it have for us today? Without further ado, let us study the what Revelation chapter 13 has for us. In Revelation, three powers of evil are presented, the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. You may wonder, and who are they? You will see how easy it is to know. Revelation 12 and 13 identifies 
these three satanic powers, we have already seen that chapter 12 speaks of the dragon, while chapter 13 speaks of a beast that arises from the sea, and then another that arises from the earth. These three powers constitute the false trinity, known as the dragon, the beast and the false prophet. We have already identified the dragon with Satan, but what does the two beasts that appear in Revelation 13 symbolise? Let us begin by reading Revelation 13, 1 and 2. The dragon stood on the shore of the sea, and I saw a beast coming out of the sea. It had ten horns and seven heads, with ten crowns on its horns, and on each head a blasphemous name. That beast I saw resembled a leopard, but had feet like those of a bear, and a mouth like that of a lion. The dragon gave the beast his power, and his throne and great authority. What a strange being! It is definitely a very weird animal. It has the body of a leopard, the mouth of a lion, and the legs of a bear. This would be interesting material for a science fiction movie, but it's not a movie. It's real life drama. Let's analyse this strange animal in order to do this. We must resort to a key biblical interpretation that we talked about in our last message. Do you remember? It is very simple. That by interrupt itself. To identify the strange animal arises from the sea, it is necessary to study chapter 7 of Daniel where a vision is na narrated in which four other strange animals also emerge from the sea. Daniel 7 presents us with the emergence of four different beasts. The first was a powerful lion that had on its back two powerful eagle wings, then followed by a bear that was more on one side than the other and had three ribs in its mouth. Later, it was followed by a strange leopard that had four heads and four wings. Finally, a horrible and indescribable animal arose from the ski that the prophet could not compare with any other creature for it had iron teeth and nails. Moreover, he had ten horns on his head. When the prophet had a vision that he pardon. When the prophet had a vision, he was as confused as you are now. However, later God explained to him that the meaning of these mysterious animals let us see how the following two verses make everything clear for us. Daniel seven verse seventeen. The four great beasts are four kings that will rise up from the earth. Daniel seven twenty three. The four beasts is a fourth kingdom that will appear on earth. What does a beast represent in prophecy? It represents a political power. So when Daniel and Revelation tells us about the beasts, they are referring to political powers. This should come as no surprise for even today animals are used to represent political parties. For example, in the United States, a donkey is used to represent the Democratic Party and an elephant to represent the Republican Party. It is important that the symbol of a beast does not simply represent political power, but also the power that rises up against God's people. Therefore, Bible identifies the four beasts of Daniel 7 with the four great kingdoms, Babylon, Medo Persia, Greece, and Rome. With this clarification, let's go back to Revelation 13, where we find these four beasts summarized in one as if to show that they are all managed by the same power. So, what fundamental features does the beast of Revelation 13 have? Let's see. Let's read Revelation 13, verse 6. It opens its mouth to blaspheme. God and sl to slander his name and dwell in place and those who lived in heaven. The Bible represents two actions as blasphemy, first claiming the power for first claiming power to forgive sins, and second taking God's place and impersonated him. 
Verse 8 of Revelation 13 says, All inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast, all whose name have not been written in the Lamb's book of life, the Lamb who was slain from creation of the world. The beast was given the power to wage war against God's holy people and to conquer them. A careful look at the actions of this beast reveals to us that it is the Antichrist and the satanic human power posing as Christ. Now let's look at the following comparisons between Christ and the beast. In short, the beast that rises from the sea in Revelation 13 is an imitation of Christ. It imitates um, the being of passion of our Christ. It presents itself with the authority of Christ upspurring his authority and power on earth. He says he forgives sins and demands worship. Before closing with this point, dear young people, let me ask you a few questions. Do you know the power that do you know of a power that in addition to being religious exercises a powerful political authority on earth? Do you know a religious power respected and admired by the kings, presidents and administries, ministers of state. I would like you to come to a conclusion for yourselves. The beast of Revelation 13 is the orchestra who seeks worship by all means necessary. The second beast of Revelation 13, which completes the trilog trilogy, of satanic powers is presented as an animal that rose from the earth and had two horns similar to those of a lamb but spoke like a dragon. Like the first beast, this second power has some distinctive features. Firstly, it arises from the earth. Secondly, it has two horns like those of a lamb. Finally, spoke like a dragon. The second power must rise in a place that is uninhabited or has little presence, and that according to Revelation 17 verse 15, the waters in prophecy symbolizes people, nations, and ton. Therefore, the earth is a symbol of little people. Likewise, this power must be raised up with principles of Christianity, since it has horns like a lamb, but even though it has risen up defending Christian principles, this power will end up speaking like a dragon. In other words, this wants to say it would rise up against Christian principles and people of God. Dear young people, what do you think the false trinity comprised of the dragon, the beast and the false prophet is pursuing? Its purpose is summed up in one word, worship. The dragon, the beast, and the false prophet want you to adore them to achieve his purpose. The false trinity has set up to attack the Ten Commandments, especially the first four. But before continuing, I, would, I will understand something that I think will help you understand this point. The law of God can be summarized according to Matthew 22, 36-40. In two great commandments, firstly, love your Lord, your God. Secondly, love your neighbor. In Exodus 20, you will notice that the first four commandments speak of our God's love and next six commandments of love for our neighbor. So, if you love God, you will have no other gods before him. You will not make an image to bow down in worship. You will not take the Lord's name in vain. You observe the seventh day as the Sabbath. If you love your neighbour, you will honour your parents. You will not kill. You will not commit adultery. You will not steal. You will not bear false witness. You will not convert. Dear young people, the commandments are the key. Are, are the key to in the final battle, and therefore, what will the true Trinity do. It will attack the first four commandments head on, which speak of love we must have for God. That's it. The dragon, the beast, and your false prophet will all work so 
your love for God declines. This false trinity will seek the worship by any means in order to achieve it. And in order to achieve it, it must erase from the minds of children, young people and adults the first four commandments that speak to us um, that speak to us of love and worship of the true God. God will be tested at this time. You must be prepared for at some point you will have to face the trials that three young Hebrew boys face. You will worship, you will then have to choose between worshipping the true trinity, God the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, or the false trinity, the dragon, the beast and the false prophet. Therefore, the most important point you will have to face the trials that three young Hebrew boys face. You will worship, you will then have to choose between worshipping the true trinity, God the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, or the false trinity, the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. Therefore, the most important question ever asked is the one Jesus once asked Peter. Do you love me? Do you truly love God? I invite you all, I invite you to love him today with all your heart and within all your mind. Young people, loving and worshipping God is the most important thing in life and I believe that your love for God will be tested this time. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Please be with those that heard this message. Please help them to put it in their lives so that they can praise you and not the false trinity. Please be with those and please help them to hear this message. And as we pray, Jesus, in your name, Amen. Your beautiful morning star. Morning star. Sweeter than springtime, pure.